I love this Texas sheet cake. It's from a box mix, the Swerve. I used to have to get it online, but I just saw that it's in my local grocery store. You can make it with the vanilla cake mix like I did, or with the chocolate, with this chocolate pecan homemade frosting that you pour over the top. Can't wait to show you how I did it. To make my Texas sheet cake, I'm gonna use this box Swerved Sweets. Today I'm using the vanilla, but I've also done this with the chocolate. It's also delicious. And I wanna explain how, what makes it a sheet cake. I always think of that like, a, like we had at school, like a little thin cake. It makes it easier to feel like you're having a bigger piece if it's thin. And for a single box, I use what's called a quarter sheet pan. This is a half sheet pan. I know it's, it's big and it's still considered a half sheet based on how bakers bake. A baker, professional baker, would bake using a full sheet pan, which would be twice this size. So a half sheet pan, the quarter sheet pan, one box and a quarter, two box and a half. Today I'm going to do the quarter. When I was cooking for other people, when I was doing the meal prep thing for other people, I used the half sheet pan. Sometimes I make up two at a time, depending on how many servings I sold. Okay, so I mix the cake mix according to directions, which was three eggs, a tablespoon of vanilla, a third of a cup of oil, I used avocado, and a third of a cup of water. And I'm gonna put it in this pan, spread it out. I am, in my oven, gonna put a bigger pan on the rack under this pan, just in case it gets a little squirrely and overflows the pan. It hadn't happened before, but you never know. Cakes are kind of crazy sometimes. So I'm gonna spread it out smooth and throw it in the oven at 350 for 15 minutes until it's springy on the top. Okay, while the cake is still in the oven, I'm gonna start making the icing. This is one stick, so half a cup of unsweetened, or unsalted butter, I'm sorry. Add in a third cup of heavy whipping cream and a quarter cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. Now, I use the unsalted butter is important because I'm gonna add a little salt later. If you use salted butter, don't add the salt later. I mix this together with my ball whisk until it comes to a slight boil. When it starts to boil, I'm gonna turn off the heat and add the rest of the ingredients. Okay, see how it's just started to bubble around the edges? I'm gonna turn off the heat, add in a teaspoon of vanilla, Half a teaspoon of salt. Remember, if you're using salted butter, skip this step. And a cup of powdered monk fruit. You can also use powdered swerve or any other sugar substitute that you're using. I'm gonna stir this together. The reason I'm using my ball whisk is when I add in my pecans, I don't want them to get stuck in my whisk break up all the clumps of the sweetener and all mixed together. Now remember I turned off the heat and because this is a gas stove the heat immediately stops. If you're on an electric stove you might have to move it off of the eye. Okay, I got most of the lumps out. I add in a whole cup of chopped pecans. That was probably a little faster than I it should have been. I should have maybe waited a little bit longer because my cake Still has about two minutes in the oven, but the frosting is done. Okay, my cake is out of the oven, freshly out, still hot. And I'm gonna pour my icing right over the top. Chocolate, pecan, yumminess. And get it all out. Spread it around. And it'll kind of harden. Oh, there's a little piece of sweetener. Or, oh, nope, it's pulling up the cake. Okay. Yeah, the cake is very fresh. It's still very hot. It did not overflow my pan, which I didn't expect it to, but I put that other pan just in case. Okay, now we're going to let it cool. And then you cut it into 12 pieces. It gives you a pretty good size slice. And enjoy.